It's official, Belmont is headed to the Missouri Valley. This video will be broken up into two parts. The first part about Belmont to the MVC, and the second part about MVC expansion. In between, there will be a brief two and a half minutes about OVC expansion. If you're new here, I go through slides rapid fire. Otherwise, you'd have an hour long video. So if there's a slide where you really want to process the data, just hit the pause button. First, here's Belmont's conference history, all the way from the Volunteer State Athletic Conference, the VSAC, to the MVC. In the span of 25 years, Belmont has risen from playing the likes of Blue Mountain and Christian Brothers to playing in the Missouri Valley. Belmont moved up to Division I in the mid to late 90s. They've been to eight NCAA tournaments since 06. They've had an average 97 Ken Palm ranking and a winning percentage of 731 in that span. Their traditional rival is Lipscomb in the Battle of the Boulevard, and their new age rival is Murray State. I went over this in my July 1 realignment predictions video where I picked Belmont to move to the MVC, so this is rehashing some stuff. But the dynamics have shifted at Belmont for them to have a change of heart since 2013 or 2017 as they have a new president from Duke who has seen how men's basketball can work at a university and presumably wants to elevate Belmont to the highest conference possible. Moreover, Belmont's undergraduate full-time enrollment has grown 54% since 2010 and their endowment has doubled in the last four years. Belmont is opening a school of medicine soon in collaboration with HCA Healthcare. So with the university booming and the expansion of the university, it was only a matter of time before they would move on from the OVC. Here are the OVC men's basketball budgets from the Department of Education, Equity, and Athletics, updated 2019-2020. And Belmont's budget will fit right in with the MVC. Here are the OVC and MVC budgets side by side. And this chart illustrates the problem that was being magnified for Belmont with the departures of Austin P, Eastern Kentucky, and Jacksonville State. Belmont and Murray now found themselves in an OVC that had exclusively schools who ranked in the 300s for their men's basketball budget. And by moving over to the MVC, Belmont gets to be with their budget peers. And here are the budget differences in graph form. The blue is MVC, green OVC, and red is Belmont. In fact, before Belmont's move, Belmont actually had the sixth largest budget discrepancy below the P5 level, as their budget was 77% over the league average. Recalculating everything after Belmont's move, now Murray State moves into the fifth largest budget discrepancy with a budget 83% over their league average. Here are the OVC and MVC net rankings over the past three years, and then at the bottom, with Belmont switch factored in. These are the conference rankings for the MVC and OVC or over the past four years. And then in gray is what the rankings would be if you swapped out the OVC's four defections and you swapped in Belmont. Of course, the net rankings are a lot more convoluted than that. By moving from the all-public OVC into the MVC, Belmont is with more peers with five private schools. Belmont's academics were very attractive to the MVC and their exploding endowment would rank top three in the Missouri Valley. One inherent disadvantage the MVC always faced up until about eight years ago was the demographics of the league. The schools were not playing in locations where they could recruit general students and student athletes. So by bringing Chicago and Nashville into the fold, MVC schools now get more exposure into pipelines for their student enrollment and student athletes. Another problem facing MVC schools is their Majority of them are in locations where the population is either declining or stagnant. And by bringing in Nashville, the league is now in a market that was booming by 21% over the past decade. These numbers show the full-time undergraduate enrollment for the Department of Education for each school from 2010 to 2020. Majority of the MVC schools were losing enrollment. So the Valley has brought in schools like Belmont and Loyola, who are exploding in enrollment, and Valparaiso, who has seen slight growth. Belmont will get considerably more TV exposure in the MVC. These were the number of games on national TV by my count. They might not be 100% accurate. But the important thing to note here is that it would take playing the OVC championship game four times to approach the number of viewers for just one MVC championship game on CBS. The MVC has always done very well in TV ratings for its championship game. Obviously, these ratings are not apples to apples as ratings depend on your network time slot the competition, but the point being is that the MVC has ranked 7th of all leagues for their championship game over the past four years, so that is impressive exposure for the two teams who play in the title game. Belmont is joining a league that is one of seven conferences nationwide where every single member has won a game in the NCAA tournament. A few of them have played for a national title, and several have advanced to the Sweet 16. 
This chart shows how much success the Missouri Valley Conference, as well as the West Coast, mainly due to Gonzaga, have had in the NCAA tournament over the past 5, 10, 15 years. And here it is in graph form between the last 15, 10, 5 years, and also the subtracting the schools who have left. Here's a travel chart for the Valley if each school were to hypothetically drive to another school. Of course, a lot of these schools have charter flights for various sports. So in conclusion, the time was right now for Belmont to make the switch with shifting dynamics both at the school between the administrative turnover and the explosive growth of the university, as well as the shifting dynamics in the OVC with the ever-widening budget gap, particularly after their departures. The next two and a half minutes will cover OVC expansion, then the remainder of the video will be about NBC expansion. The OVC is now down to eight schools. They're at the bare minimum six members needed for football. And with an average athletic budget, an average men's basketball budget, and average net rankings when accounting for the defections, all in the bottom four of Division I, in my view, Western Illinois and Chicago State are the only Division I schools who would accept an OVC invite. I think Murray State and Tennessee State are likely to find a life raft, whereas the other six will likely be stuck in the OVC, so those six will be your core moving forward. Murray State will likely find a new home due to their men's basketball prowess and their suitable men's basketball budget. The SWAC has got to be looking a lot more attractive to Tennessee State now, especially with the collapse of the OVC. The chart measures home attendance for Tennessee State, breaking up between homecoming, hosting PWIs, and hosting SWAC teams. The SWAC teams resonate with their fan base much more, and Tennessee State in general has impressive football attendance that is ranked between 8th and 28th ever since it's been tracked. I saw Tennessee State in person for the first time a couple weeks ago in Canton, Ohio against Grambling, and Tennessee State brought a large contingent there, which was pretty impressive. The realistic OVC targets as I see it moving forward are Western Illinois, which would give the OVC a 7th football member, and moving to the OVC might be attractive to Western Illinois because their athletic budget would go from $8.5 million below the Summit median to just $1 million below the OVC median, and they would alleviate their travel expenses from going to the Dakotas and Denver. I also see Southern Indiana going to the OVC, which was a pick of mine in my July 1 realignment predictions video. They've opened a brand new Screaming Eagles arena with suites, and the city already hosts the OVC tournament. The OVC's turmoil can be traced back to decisions made 10 years ago, when they rejected Northern Kentucky and North Alabama. On to MVC expansion. The MVC is at 11 members with six privates and five publics. So if they expand to 12, the assumptions I am making is that the 12th member will be public. It will be a geographic fit. The exception is unless they were previously linked by Matt Brown, so UTA. And the additions have to be realistic. Wichita State and SLU aren't leaving leagues with much higher budgets than the MVC. Not to mention TV revenue in the American and that exposure in Wichita playing with a lot of other urban schools and an aspirational peer in Memphis, and SLU in general always orientating itself towards the East Coast. SLU wouldn't even join an MVC that was a four-bid league in the mid-2000s, so they're not going to join now. I don't know who the actual candidates are, but the theoretical candidates I've come up with for this presentation are Northern Kentucky, Murray State, Wright State, UIC, Milwaukee, Little Rock, and UTA. Here's a comparison of their institutional profiles. The full-time undergraduate enrollment is from the Department of Education. I like using those numbers because it's uniform re reporting. U.S. News rankings aren't the end-all be-all of academics. They can be manipulated. And there's other rankings people use like Forbes. But I'm going to use U.S. News for simplicity as that's one of the more popular rankings people use. Here's a demographic comparison. Note that Valparaiso is in the Chicago MSA but I've decided to calculate the total populations for Lake Quarter, Newton, and Jasper counties in Indiana for a Northwest Indiana measurement instead of just duplicating Chicago's MSA population. Murray is the only location on here that is not part of a MSA. Murray is in a micro-statistical area. Murray, Kentucky does belong to the Paducah DMA, but that stretches two hours away to the likes of Carbondale and Cape Girardeau and two and a half hours to Poplar Bluff. Here are the enrollment trends of full-time undergraduate enrollment from 2010 to 2020. Murray State has been slightly losing enrollment, as has Northern Kentucky. Milwaukee has been losing enrollment, but their enrollment is still very high, and Little Rock and Wright State have been hit hard. UIC and UTA are booming. Here are the athletic budgets of the candidates. UIC, UTA, and Murray State are on top. And here are the men's basketball budgets. Wright State has a very impressive men's basketball budget. UIC, Murray State, Northern Kentucky would fit in the MVC as well. 
And here's a men's basketball budget comparison with all of them in graph form. Light blue are the MVC schools and dark blue are the theoretical candidates. Here's a comparison of what I call self-generated revenue. The numbers are taken from the Knight Commission, which was updated in 2018-2019. I take ticket sales, donor contributions, and sponsorships and add them all up to one number, which equals self-generated revenue. Murray State leads by quite a bit in both ticket sales and overall self-generated revenue. And then the graph breaks it down where light blue is ticket sales, dark blue is donor contributions, and orange is sponsorships. And put them all together, that makes up the self-generated revenue. Here's a three-year average attendance comparison. Murray State would rank top four in the MVC. Wright State and Northern Kentucky also rank well. And here's the attendance comparison in graph form. Here are the 10-year Ken Palm rankings for all the schools. Murray State would be top three in the MVC. Northern Kentucky, Wright State, and UTA are also all good. For Northern Kentucky, I've excluded their transitional years. And here's an NCAA tournament comparison. The first column is appearances, and the second column is the years they've won in the NCAA tournament. And here's the mileage distance from the theoretical candidates to each MVC school. And then all the way to the right is the average number of miles. And the second column from the right is the driving time to Arch Madness, which was not put into the average miles calculation. So pulling everything all together, here's a catch-all chart that puts together everything that was in the previous slides. So ticket sales, donor contributions, sponsorships, which all add up to self-generated revenue. Then athletic budget and men's basketball budget. Of course, those numbers are all in millions. And then the Division I rank of their men's basketball budget, followed by their three-year attendance average their 10-year average Ken Palm ranking, number of NCAA tournament appearances, number of NCAA tournament wins, their average miles to each MVC school, then their U.S. News ranking as an academic barometer, their Carnegie Research Classification as another academic barometer, their endowment, their full-time undergraduate enrollment, their 10-year enrollment trend from 2010 to 2020, their MSA ranking, and finally the 10-year trend of their MSA population from 2010 to 2020. So here's my stab at those seven theoretical candidates in the order of least likelihood to most likelihood. I have no idea how the university presidents will evaluate these candidates or how much weight they'll put into each barometer. So this is just one person's guess. At number seven, I have Little Rock as they have the smallest athletic budget and smallest men's basketball budget among the candidates. And their attendance and Ken Palm ranking have been on the low end. But there's a lot of things to like about them, too. They would give Missouri State a regional partner. They're second in self-generated revenue among candidates and first in donor contributions. And they're decent academically. Number six, I have Wright State, which is a shame because Wright State has been a very consistent program over the long term. And they have a long established fan base. But I just think the financial mismanagement under previous administrations is too much of a mountain to climb. Dropping down to 11 sports during COVID can't help. And their full-time undergraduate enrollment has fallen by 40% since 2010. Number five, I have Milwaukee. I'd imagine that university presidents would love their academic profile, especially adding in enrollment and endowment. The Milwaukee of the 2000s would be higher on this list. Even after their Sweet 16 and their win in the NCAA tournament the following year under year one with Rob Jeter, I remember Milwaukee hosting Butler in a sold-out mecca as Milwaukee was the one seed. In the Horizon Final, and had swept Butler in the regular season. Of course, Milwaukee would lose that game, and Butler would go to the national title game. But unfortunately, in the 2010s, Milwaukee, their basketball program has really collapsed, and as has their fan support. Number four, I have UIC. There's an old saying, if this school were to go 0-18, would you want them as a member of your league? And for a UIC, an institution that is that strong academically, in Chicago with a booming enrollment, in impressive budgets, that's exactly the kind of institution that university presidents love. Working against them is everything on the court and with fan support and market duplication. Number three, I have Northern Kentucky who has hit the ground running in their first five years as a full Division I member. They play in an attractive market and hit tout one of the premier mid-major arenas across the country. Number two in likelihood, I have Arlington. UTA plays in the number four MSA and adding them would make the MVC one of three leagues in the country that are present in two of the top four MSAs, the other two being the Big Ten and Big East. DFW grew by 20% since 2010, and UTA's full-time undergraduate enrollment boomed by 28% since 2010. They're solid academically, have a good endowment, and have the second highest athletic budget among candidates. 
Working against them is their men's basketball budget, their fan support, and the fact that they would impact the travel budgets of all NBC members who will have to fly to DFW for all sports. And the most likely member, in my view, is Murray State. There are some caution flags with Murray State as their academic profile could be a potential non-starter that takes them off the board completely. And they're not located in a market where the other schools recruit general students and student athletes. But I'm going to stick with my original prediction and say Murray State overcomes those hurdles. Their ticket sales tripled nearly all the other candidates. They have the best fan support, the best 10-year Ken Palm average, the most tradition with 17 NCAA tournament appearances, and they're among the top 50 all-time winningest programs. They've had three teams who've won in the NCAA tournament since 2010, which would generate revenue for the NBC. And they have a fan base that's known for traveling by the thousands to the conference tournament. So with how much of a basketball fit Murray State is with the NBC, I'm going to go against conventional university president wisdom and pick the racer caravan to take a permanent detour to Arch Madness.